This is a device that will make some people very happy because it solves the problem of charging your power station when you're on a trip. This is a DC to DC converter that you would mainly use in your vehicle and ultimately the problem that this solves is that it can charge your batteries or your power station at a much higher rate than just using your car's regular 12 volt car port or they used to be called a cigarette port. This is the F1000, it's from a brand called eTaker. They sent this to me to test out. And the main function of this device is that it draws power from your vehicle's alternator while the engine is running to allow more power to come out of the output compared to that 12 volt car port. The problem with these car ports is that they weren't designed to handle a lot of output power. When you have your power station plugged into this, you're gonna expect around eight amps and 12, with a 12 volt output, that's about 100 watts or so. So right now I have it plugged into this power station. You can see I'm inputting a little over 80 watts or so, but generally you can expect between 80 and 100 watts. And if your power station has a one kilowatt hour battery at about 100 watts, that's gonna take about 10 hours. But with a device like this, you can drastically reduce the charging time. For example, if you only had this connected directly to your vehicle's 12 volt system and you selected the maximum output of 500 watts, then you could charge this same one kilowatt hour power station from zero to 100% in about two hours. In order to achieve the maximum output, you would need to add 500 watts of solar, which will give you 1,000 watts of output, which basically means if you have a one kilowatt hour battery and you're on full output on this thing, you can charge your one kilowatt hour battery in about a one hour car trip. Now, obviously that's in ideal situations because your power station may not be able to handle a thousand watts of input. Some smaller ones aren't able to do that and you have to max out the input. So there are inputs on this device. On the right, there's a solar input that can handle up to 500 watts of solar. And on the left is where you connect it up to your car's alternator. And if you were to combine those two maximums, that's how you're able to get that output of a thousand watts. All right, so here's how this system works. The engine is at idle. I'm putting a little under 14 volts. I have it connected to the battery. There's the fuse in the middle. On the F1000 device itself, I have solar panel coming in right here. This is a 400 watt solar panel, which is back there. And then this is what's connected up to the battery and alternator. So if we look on our power station, to have it at 300 watt setting, that means the solar panel is putting out about 220 watts which is right here behind me. So it's a later day sun. Now, because I'm bringing in over 200 watts of solar here, I don't need to crank this up as much because the input on that power station has a maximum of 600 watts. But if I took out the solar and I still wanted 500 watts, there's this selector here. What I can do is hold this down. And we'll take it up to 500 watts, no solar this time and it's going to draw more from the battery. So if we take a look at what's happening on the power station, we can see we're just under 500 watts of input. So one of the things you can do with this is put it in vibration detection mode so it won't draw from the alternator or battery sort of when the car is in idle but only when it detects the car moving. But I imagine the main benefit of having that feature on is that it won't charge the batteries while the vehicle is at idle and it detects it not moving. So right now I'm inputting I don't know if you can see it on the screen there, zero watts. And watch what happens when I shake this. I don't have the solar hooked up. And now it's inputting power. When you have vibration detection mode on, there's a timeout value of about two and a half minutes. So for example, if you're sitting at a traffic light for that longer, longer, it will stop drawing power from your car engine until it detects movement again. And if you have that mode off, it will start drawing power when the battery voltage is 12.6 volts or higher, and then stop when the voltage is about 12.4 volts. And that low cutoff is there, so it won't drain your vehicle battery and then leave you stranded. And if you have a solar panel connected here and the power switch is on, this LED light will come on and whether your car is running or not or whatever the voltage is, it will allow the solar panel power to pass through here to the output. The F1000 comes with a 50 amp fuse and enclosure, a protective sleeve for the charging cables so you can route this through your vehicle. These cables are about 10 feet long. You also get a thick XT60 output cable for your power station that's over 11 feet long. Now I was testing this on my minivan which has M6 terminals on the battery and that's what's on these crimped ends. But in my RV, the bolt is bigger, it's an M8. So in order to use these F1000 cables there, I would want to cut these off and crimp on some M8 connectors. The F1000 doesn't have any remote monitoring that I'm aware of, but it is something you can set up in your vehicle. You see these four mounting holes and by itself fast charge your batteries while on a trip, or you could use it as a supplement to the solar panels that you have on your roof. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing as I'm building up this new channel, talking about anything and everything related to solar power.